Jackie. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. So glad to be seeing you on video right now. Um, so before we start, can you kindly introduce yourself for us? Sure. Sure, sure. So my name is Agi Kwiecień, and this is the, my professional name, but my actual full name is Agnieszka Kwiecień. Um, and I am a Polish to English and English to Polish public service translator and interpreter. Uh, I have been working for uh, exactly 10 years. Uh, I celebrated my 10 uh, year anniversary last week. And my work spans multiple different domains and topics. So when I was able to walk, uh, I broke my leg in July. So I have been housebound for three that. months. Is it okay? Yeah. Are you okay now? I'm fine. It's fine. It's uh, I'm, I'm actually waiting until Friday. I'm like, oh, mm. when is it going to be Friday? <laughs> I'm just ticking, ticking everything off the calendar. Mm. Uh, so I'll hopefully be told that I can start putting some weight on it. Uh, because with just one leg, it's very difficult to go down the stairs. So I've yeah. essentially thought, maybe not. Like, let's just, you know, <laughs> keep it safe. Uh, but uh, yes, before this happened to me, I was working as mostly a legal interpreter. Mm. So I would assist um, courts, tribunals, solicitors, barristers, uh, both in court and out of court mm. in communicating with the um, clients, defendants, victims, uh, etc. I also do a certain amount of work in something called public, uh, uh, local authority, sorry, which includes uh, housing, social services, education. Uh, education is one of my biggest um, specialties because I have a background in education. I'm a trained teacher of English wow. and I had multiple roles and yeah, it seems like a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I did some, some teaching work uh, before I relocated to the UK, which was fairly really? quickly after I finished mm -hmm. my degree. Uh, but yeah, and uh, I recently started my adventure with YouTube and that's what I've been doing it's honestly a blessing because it really keeps me occupied when I'm sitting at home uh, so yeah that's me very exciting um so congratulations again for your 10 intense year anniversary thank you ah, something else. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. so is it also a way of you celebrating you know to start YouTube I, I mean you mentioned about you know about your leg but also I can see a lot of things are happening in your life I know um well this this is I think it's equally a blessing and a curse because I'm a very busy person and I love doing things but I'm very limited as to what I can do uh like the most I can do right now is hoover with with one hand so my poor fiance has to do most of the things which leaves me with a great deal of time to pursue projects so the 10 year thing was um something I've been thinking about this for quite a long time you know how to just incorporate the key points which you know on a certain level is impossible because there's so much that you learn and uh, there's so much that you can really convey uh, but uh, I wanted to just put put it together like in a nice neat list and you know it's a nice round anniversary and I actually recorded a follow-up video with 10 more lessons oh yes yes, yes. Uh, Tomorrow, right? and it, it's Tomorrow, you see, right? Um, so the YouTube thing, I actually set up a YouTube channel almost a year ago again, and I put some videos that I did for an organization called uh, International School of Linguists. We did a series on telephone interpreting. It's called Telephone Interpreting Masterclass. Um, and I really enjoyed doing it. I just found that it's so cool to talk about your experiences with a person and, you know, that kind of interview format. It's all the rage right now. So I thought, well, this is brilliant. And then nothing happened for <laughs> nearly a year. And then I just found myself with time on my hands. And I thought, well, YouTube might be, you know, giving way to other formats mm -hmm. slightly, but there is still a lot of people who learn from it, including myself. Mm -hmm. um, myself and my fiance are spoiler alert, well, spoiler alert, or you know, oh. full oh. disclosure, were tarantula keepers. 
So we keep tarantulas. Oh, I've got them sitting on my desk. <laughs> yeah, they keep me company. Um, and he, I got him into the hobby as well. So we both watch videos about tarantulas. And for many people, YouTube is like Google. They will go and look for how to cook something, you know, how to change a tire. And there is so much there, you know, that you can really incorporate in something accessible because not everybody likes to read mm -hmm. and I you know I, I am an avid reader but I appreciate that not everybody likes that medium but they still want to learn and you know like TikTok might be just a bit too you know too fast or too gimmicky so I thought okay I'm going to concentrate on YouTube and I'm going to have a strategy of what I want to put out there and I want to share uh, you know with people because as an interpreter, I love to talk. I love to talk about what I do. My family and friends are literally sick to death of me, you know, jabbering about, I had this assignment and it was cool. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, Aggie, just. Uh. So I thought, why not share it with the world? And also may it be a benefit to people who are maybe just starting out or who want to learn more about public service interpreting, because this is a type of um, interpreting that is ever present but it's always and i'm saying it always well in 99.9% .9 of cases it's always represented incorrectly in the mainstream media mm. so uh for example if you watched um i don't know if you're a marvel fan i'm quite a big marvel fan and i was watching what was it a hawkeye uh and there were there's a character there who uses american sign language and I literally nearly flipped when uh, uh, when the, the character appeared. I'm not going to like spoil it for people who haven't watched it. Um, she uses ASL. And the person who interprets for her goes, well, she's saying that. And I'm like, oh, no, no, please stop. Please stop. That's not what you're doing. But then miraculously, I, I'm guessing there was a bit of a backlash. They got it right in the second episode. Mm. Uh, so the person was interpreting in first person. So it's not he said, she said, but it's the interpreter speaks as if they were the person. Mm. And this is just one of the things that is just a source of frustration for me. And that's kind of why I want to talk about public service interpreting, which is also called community interpreting mm. or dialogue interpreting. Uh, and, you know, spread that awareness of what it actually looks like, because uh, it is literally in any, you know, if you think about any aspect of life, you know, birth, uh, death, getting your taxes done, getting um, a car, signing uh, an agreement, that's everywhere. Every aspect of life is covered by uh, public service interpreting. Mm. So, yeah. That's kind of my uh, my mission as well to just to wow. educate people about it and dispel those misconceptions and myths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a career to have, and also very rewarding and fulfilling inside. I must say, because you know you you are you know you get to help people actually by helping them out there. You know, it is it is very uh, it's it's. <laughs> It, it is a type of a career where you really have to put yourself in the background, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very service based. And by that, I mean, I understand. Um, mm -hmm. you know, when you have like UN interpreters uh, or interpreters in, in the sports, in the media. I remember um, uh, the manager for Liverpool team uh, praising a very pleasing voice of his interpreter like on live television and that was really funny but we never really get seen because our work is confidential so we're not allowed to talk about it but honestly it's a huge honor to serve people because I serve people uh, in that way because you really get to learn things that you never would have learned otherwise and you also appreciate your humanity more and it also it definitely made me more sensitive to people uh, to the point where you know I'll meet a friend or someone and I immediately know what mood they're in because you read the body language you read oh, yes. you know how they act so I think it's it's really useful to develop your soft skills I'd say mm -hmm. oh, very good point okay so moving on to our next topic which is about your paperless project 
Yes. So I understand, you know, interpreters get to use a lot of paper. That's how I, do. you got to, you know, think of this project, right? Can you probably we share do. a little bit about what you're doing with that of project? Of course, absolutely. Um, so we use a lot of paper uh, as interpreters and it it's not just a case of I'm going to whiz it in the bin. It has to be properly disposed of. So, for example, if I when I used to go to courts, I used to take one of these. I actually have a bunch of brand new ones that I ordered because I never used them. Let me just find find one for you. Uh, it's like a reporter's notebook type of thing. Mm. So basically, I write. And then I just rip it all out and hand it to the court clerk and say, please, madam, would you be kind, so kind as to put it in the confidential uh, confidential bill, uh, bin? Because I could have uh, things there like names, dates, phone numbers, uh, amounts of money, bank accounts, all sorts of uh, sensitive uh, information. So it was it was a lot, and I just kept buying those notebooks. And I'm and at one point I thought, well, I've got so many note, I've got so so such a need. I'm gonna buy like a ten piece, you know, packet. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool, and I've I've got all that I need. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, that that's a lot. So then I thought, well, how can I get rid of the paper? So I went through a whole research and development phase, uh, starting from rubbing the writing in pencil and rubbing um, the pages off, which was just a nightmare. Uh, I laminated paper and I wrote with whiteboard pens. That was even worse. Mm. And then I discovered these. Oh. I don't want to destroy my office at the same time. Uh, these are so-called LCD tabs. So it was actually my colleague, uh, Hiba Bayat, uh, who introduced me to those. They're super cheap. It's like $2, maybe $3, maybe a bit more. And you basically write and then you whoop, press a button. Nope, it's not cooperating today. Oh, I forgot how to use them. Yeah, press the button. Goes. And then it, yep. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you can just the, the uh, there's like a companion app to it that you can scan, but I think it's just a waste of time. So I I don't uh, I don't think it's it's really worth the hassle. I just click, click and remove it. Uh, but the issue with that is that um, they you you have to basically have a couple of them because th there's only so, so much space. Yes. And for example, if I'm in court and someone starts to talk about tell a story, mm. or if there is a lot of details, you write and write and write and write. Uh, so I thought, well, why not have a notebook mm. with more pages mm. like that? So then I I um. I was posting about this is a basically this is a wonderful thing about having an interest in something and posting about it because I was posting my like initial ideas about paperlessness and I like mentioned uh, a whiteboard, uh, Onyx books, tablets, those uh, LCD tabs, and a lady who is an agency owner mentioned Rocket Box and I'm like, what's a Rocket Box? And I looked it up on the internet. And they're brilliant. Uh, and I've been using them ever since because I don't always have time to go click, swap, but sometimes I just need to keep writing and then, you know, flip the page and go back. Uh, so this is basically what I what I use right now. I also made a pledge not to buy any books that I won't read twice. And by that, I mean, I don't buy, uh, you know, literature. I don't buy uh, fiction, um, and if I can get something on a in an ebook form, I'll get it in an ebook form. And that's not just because you can't actually see this because this uh, my office is, you know, quite uh, uh, strategically covered with uh, with my screen because it's just an absolute mess. But I literally have stacks of books everywhere. Um, so I decided that okay. You know, I have all the reference books that I need, but right now, everything I'm going to buy is going to be electronic to just get rid of that that much, you know, that much paper. So this is where I am right now. Uh, I have uh, some very exciting news. I have a meeting with someone from a certain company tomorrow, and I'm not going to tell you more. Uh, but yeah, I I really find that it's interesting to have that focus 
because it makes you think about other things and then you have other ideas and you know that kind of narrow focus on no paper get rid of paper just really helped me think about other things that I consume and use uh, and my next paperlessness challenge paperless challenge episode will be about uh, you you probably might have heard about this um I now I always get the name wrong I have to check. Uh, one by Wacom, uh, which is a graphic tablet. And I'm going to be talking about this uh, in my next episode. Uh, this one is a very uh, very clever one because it can be used in conference interpreting as well. Mm -hmm. It has a huge host of functionalities like editing. Um, uh, you can annotate websites. You can annotate pretty much anything that you've got on your screen. So I'm going to be talking about this next. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm exciting. See where it goes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so many more things to come on your new YouTube. Yes. I guess we will yes. really follow you on YouTube. So thank you um, so much. So that was for your YouTube. Any closing comments before you go for your fellow translator or, or interpreters? Um, well, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, you, Jane, for inviting me. It's just such an honor to talk about like something that's really, you know, a, a source of passion for me. And what I would say to translate this and interpreters, um, uh, especially to my fellow public service interpreters, I would say that um, get yourself on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I love giving advice. Get yourself on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, get yourself on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn has changed changed my life. It's one of the best things uh, in terms of social media. Uh, and a lot of people think, oh, it's all just business people in suits. But it's really not. And even if you don't necessarily have things to post, you can always learn. And what I would like to say as like my mission statement if you will is uh always keep learning never stop learning mm. this is really the kind of the, the part and parcel of our professional lives is learning but um i really think that i am a public service interpreter but i love to talk to other professionals uh, in other languages uh you know not like being clicky and oh you know we Croatian interpreters we just got to huddle together in our little corner or we polish ones like oh we're not talking to german interpreters but you know i think it's wonderful to reach out mm -hmm. and talk to people who have nothing to do with your specialty because that's where i usually learn the most about exactly. marketing social media content strategy um you know all all that hot stuff you know hot mm -hmm. hot topics right now mm -hmm. and you know including including yourself because we we met on linkedin mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's yeah. really wonderful really yes yeah and and all these useful precious tips um aggie will be sharing on her youtube video tomorrow yes. What's i will be yes looking forward yes. to myself too including online oh presence, thank you so um, much and also about you know continuous development and yep. also very very practical tips for interpreters yes like what's yes coming from you know aggie's 10 year more than 10 year experiences so thank yes. you so much for sharing that i no, that's my pleasure too. YouTube growth. Thank you. I'm um, totally off topic, but I yeah. didn't quite get the tarantula thing. You mentioned. Oh, right. <laughs> Can you, uh, like, before you, you go, if see, you have one Would you like to see one? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. The how many right, of so them? I, I've got uh, I've got seven of my private wow, ones. Wow, this is so special. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, can I mention this on my LinkedIn post? I sure, think of so course awesome. you can. It yeah, is of course. special. It's it's a weird yeah. hobby that I have. I've always wanted to have one. I've always oh, I've yes, always dreamt yeah. about my friend, my really good friend took me to her um, uh, workplace. She used to teach animal care and she let me handle one. Oh. And it was a, like a really big fluffy terrain. I've never been scared of spiders, but you know, I've been kind of indifferent. But she let me handle one and it's such an amazing experience. It really is. They are very, people are like, oh, they're disgusting. They're actually really nice to touch, although they don't like it. Um, they, <laughs> they, no, they, they, they get used to it. Some of okay. them get used to it. Okay. But um, yeah, and then three years wow. ago, she took me to uh, like a special, um, it's Ooh. called, uh, there you go. This called... is Ambrose. Oh. Can you see wow, him? Wow, yes, yes, very clearly. Yeah. 
He's one of the smaller ones. I see. So it like yeah. she she took you somewhere and then you, you... yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a play there is a, an annual um, event called in the uh, invertebrates show where breeders uh, oh. bring in their animals and people can buy them and it's ethical because a lot of tarantula trade is from poaching which is obviously horrible uh, to the point where some of the species have been poached so much that they are bred in captivity and released uh, oh. to repopulate because the population was was diminished um so i started with one uh she's called arachnia she is very cranky and then i thought wow i like the look of that one and tarantula keepers they never have just one tarantula I uh, you usually have about 20 well I, I can't speak for anybody else but you like minimum is 10 you know so uh, i really that. I've got seven. I've got seven. My fella has a really, uh, he's got a really funky one uh, that lives on trees. Mine just sit oh, on the ground and chill all day. So they are all but different, yeah. which is amazing. They are, they are just like yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. They different. are, they, they, they have personalities. This is, wow. this is really weird because they just <laughs> like, they don't have brains. Like we, we think, you know, brains, the invertebrates so that the, the intelligence is limited. But if you say have a species uh, which can be quite skittish and nervous, you might come across some that are quite like, yeah, fine, you want to pick me up, go ahead. And some will uh, flick at you, which is they, they have this clever um, strategy, uh, tactics for, for defense. They turn uh, the butts uh, bumps in, in towards you and they kick the hairs from the abdomen in, in your eyes that's how they defend themselves it's actually really difficult to get them to bite you mm -hmm. uh the people think oh tarantulas are venomous they're not they're, they're like really really docile most of them and they'll just run away rather than attack you but yeah they're all very different depending on the species wow. there are some real a-holes that will actually try and attack you when you feed them and some are like hamsters you can just put them on your hand and go oh so yeah it's really cool <laughs> okay another very cool, very Bobby. fun fact i got to yeah. know for the first time in my life so thank you again no that's my pleasure that's, so much that's been wonderful talking with you yes it was lo lovely and wonderful talking with you and i really truly hope all the best for your any of you, your future endeavors so thank you thank so you. much jane thank, thank you so much see Chandra. you again i'll speak to you soon see you again yes. bye, -bye. bye.